my absolute favorite features in Final Cut Pro is the multicam editor. Today we are going to take an in-depth look at how to use the multicam editor and this video is going to be absolutely jam-packed with different tips and tricks. Here we are in Final Cut Pro and I have all of these shots from a live performance that I filmed. Now I've went ahead and renamed all of them so I can easily find which shots are what. Something that's really important with multicam editing is to have some good organization. So what we're going to do is actually assign different camera angles to these shots. So the first thing I'm going to do is select this shot here and this is actually my B camera angle. Selecting that we can go over to the right hand side and find the information panel. If you scroll to the bottom you're gonna see this basic button and that is actually setting up the view so let's change it from basic over to extended now with that selected you can see that we have our real scene take camera angle and camera name so you can get as granular as you like with this for your organization now I recommend that you typically change the camera angle or camera name for your multi cams so what I'm gonna do is under my camera angle I'm just gonna call it camera B then on my other angle, I'll call it camera A. And then on the third camera, we'll just call that camera C. Now to keep this simple, I'm just gonna go ahead and assign a multicam to these first two angles and we'll worry about the other ones a little bit later on. I'm gonna right click and select new multicam camera. In here, I'll just call it the show multicam. Then scrolling down, you'll see the use audio for synchronization. I highly recommend that you leave this checked. It has saved me so many times when I haven't had any sort of time code or markers in place to set up the sync. Moving further down, you can see angle assembly, and this is actually going to tell Final Cut Pro how we want these angles to be set up. Let's change it from automatic over to camera angle because we added those camera angles to each individual shot. Moving further down, you'll see angle clip ordering. I usually just leave this at automatic, but you can change it over to time code or content created. And also angle synchronization, I usually leave at automatic but again if you need to get a little bit more granular you can change it over to stuff like first marker on the angle start of the first clip all sorts of different options moving further down I recommend you leave your video at whatever settings you happened to shoot that video on so I shot this at 4k at 23.98 now it should be noted that there is an alternate take within here that is actually shot at 60 frames per second and that was so that I could use slow-mo for different promos and stuff like that and Final Cut Pro does an exceptional job at working with variable frame rates so now you can be the new James Cameron and film your own avatar with multi frame rates and Final Cut Pro will do all of the heavy lifting. Now that we've got those settings dialed, we can go ahead and push OK. And Final Cut Pro is going to do its multicam magic. And just like that, you'll see we have this clip generated. If we look in the top left, you're going to see the multicam icon. What that means is that we can actually double click on that clip and it will give us the multicam timeline viewer. In here, we can adjust each of these individual shots. We can do color corrections, we could adjust the audio levels, everything we could possibly need for our main timeline. And any changes we apply within this multicam are going to apply across the board, which is really, really nice and heavily speeds up your workflow rather than say copying and pasting effects across your timeline. You'll notice here on the left side that each of these different angles have been labeled accordingly. So we have A and we have B. But let's say we wanted to add in an additional angle after we've already created this multicam. Well, all we need to do is click on this down arrow and select add angle. Now I can rename this angle and I'll just call it C. Then I could drag in the shot that I want. So I want this particular shot. Click on this down arrow with it selected and select sync selection to monitoring angle. Now Final Cut Pro will automatically go through and sync up this shot. However, there is a particular issue with this shot and that is that I filmed these on different nights. So the music is not quite lining up properly. So Final Cut Pro is gonna have a little bit harder time of syncing this up. And later on in the clips, all the music is going to be out of sync. So how can we solve this problem? Well, the great thing with multicam editing is even though they're in their separate angles, each shot can be cut up just like any other shot in your regular timeline. So if we take a look at this shot, we can actually find the end of some music. So I happen to know that the music ends right here. I'm just gonna push and hold B to give me the blade tool and then click. And then when I release the B key, it's gonna give me back to my position tool. Now I can select that individual shot 
click on this down arrow and select sync selection to monitoring angle. So now this part of the music has been resynced with our original monitoring angle, which is this top one. At any time we can change the monitoring angle by finding this icon here, this little computer screen. If you click that on a separate angle, that is going to change that over to the monitoring angle. And you'll notice now that that is the angle that is actually playing in my viewer. So I'll change my monitoring angle again, and there it is in the wide shot. If you ever need to preview a specific shot, you can scroll your mouse over the top of it and it will just skim through like any other shot up here in your browser. Now it's time to prep our audio for the main timeline. This first angle actually has four channels of audio. So I'm gonna select it and go on up to my audio inspector. If you look down here at the bottom, you'll see that I have four channels. Two of these channels are coming from the actual camera, which are terrible microphones. And then one of these is an actual audio mix coming from the audio board. I'm gonna go ahead and just disable dialog four and three, and two is also just a silent channel, so I'll disable that as well. So now we only have the music coming through on this specific shot, and that's gonna really clean up our audio when we get to the primary timeline. Another thing I wanna do is make sure that I know what audio is what by using color coding. So I can right click and select assign audio roles and then I'm going to assign the music role. So now everything is green and that immediately tells me that this is a music track. So it's very visually distinguished and it's gonna help out a lot down the road. Now the second track, I actually used crowd mics and I recorded that directly into the camera. So it doesn't have multi-channel audio, but I still want that color variation so I quickly know what it is. So I'm just gonna right click and select assign audio roles and I'm going to assign the effects role. So now it's got that kind of teal look. So we got the green for music, teal for effects. Now, if we go to the bottom, we have this regular dialogue track. And honestly, the audio on this was absolutely terrible. It was just purely used for synchronization. So we can go ahead and just completely disable that altogether. So now that we've done that, we can go ahead and back out of our multicam editor by clicking on this arrow here. And that'll take us to our primary timeline. But you'll notice there is no multicam clip down in the main timeline. All of the changes that we just applied to the clip up here in our browser will also be applied to the clip if we drag it down to the timeline. So I'll go ahead and just click and drag that down and you'll see that everything is set up as the music track and that's because we set up that audio role. If we select it and go over to our audio tools, we can see here that we can enable and disable different audio tracks. So we could enable the audio from the crowd at the same time as having the music track. And what that will do is change the color of this over to this gray color indicating that it has multiple audio channels. But I'm also gonna show you another way you can enable this without having to go to the audio editor. So I'm gonna go ahead and disable the B track. Then what we can do is go up to view, show in viewer, and we're gonna select angles. You can also achieve that with command shift seven. Now that we have our multicam set up, we don't really need our browser at the moment. So I'm just gonna go ahead and disable that clicking on this icon. You can also do that with command control one. This is the angle viewer. You'll see that we have currently two tracks enabled. If we wanna do enable more tracks to be visible, we can go up to the settings and change it over to something like four angles. So now I see that there are four viewers. Editor Dylan here, I forgot to mention that if you want alternate pages of your clips, you can click on these little squares at the bottom of your angle viewer, and that will give you alternate pages so you can access all of your clips, but still have a large preview. Anytime you need to change the angle in Final Cut Pro, it's very, very simple. We can just play through, find a place that we want to make the cut, and click on that clip. And now the cut has been made over. But this has done a couple things. This has not only changed the video angle, but it has also changed the audio source. And we don't want that happening throughout the entire video. There might be some instances, maybe with an interview where you want that, but for this specifically, we want the audio to remain the same all the way through. So if you take a look at the top left, you're gonna see three options. We have our video and audio, video only, and audio only. So by selecting these different options, you're gonna get different cuts created. Currently, it's set to video and audio. If we wanted it so it only cut the video but kept the audio exactly the same, I'm gonna go ahead and undo that cut. I'm gonna select the video mode, and then I can create the cut. So now it has not changed the audio source. It's going to remain the same throughout. But what if we want multiple audio sources on a specific cut? Well, what's really cool is I'm gonna go ahead and change this over to audio mode. Then I can push command and option, and then I can click on an alternate angle. 
you'll notice that my video clip down here has once again gone gray. And you'll see that in the top right, it has the video and audio icon on this golden selected one, which is showing us that that is the video angle that is currently selected, as well as this clip on the left also has audio selected. So we have selected both channels of audio and this can be really handy if you happen to need to enable and disable audio tracks throughout your edit. Another way to change angles, and this is actually my favorite, is to use the numbers on your keyboard. So if I wanted to change the angle, I could just push one and then move forward, two, one, two, one. So you can essentially edit in real time, which is really, really incredible. But if you happen to make a cut that you weren't happy with, it's very easy to fix. You just need to select the edit and then you can push delete. And now that edit is going to be completely gone. Also, if you wanted to change a clip without adding an additional cut, say maybe I wanted to change this particular clip here, all you need to do is place your playhead over it, push option, and then click to make the cut. So that will actually swap out the clip without making an additional cut. Now, audio is not always perfect. Sometimes you need to adjust the levels. Currently, if we were to adjust levels, I'll use the range selection tool and I'll click and drag down. That's going to add keyframes over all of the audio sources. And maybe we just want to affect a single source. Right click on a clip and select expand audio components. That is also achieved with control option and S. So now you'll see we have this multi-track audio. And in here, I can add individual keyframes to an audio portion without affecting the other audio levels. So this is very powerful at mastering your audio very quickly in Final Cut Pro. And once I've done all of my audio tweaking, I can select it, push Control, Option, and S, and that will collapse everything down for me, making my timeline nice and neat and tidy. A couple extra things that might be helpful for you to know is with this angle viewer, you can go up into the settings and you can enable stuff like time code, or you can enable under your display name, stuff like the clip name, or you could also set it as none. So now that I have all of my editing done, it would be time for me to go back into the multicam clip by double clicking on it. And I could go in, I'll push command six, and I could apply a color grade across the board here to get everything matched up. And if you leave your angle viewer in the top left, you can actually get a pretty good indication of how close your shots are matched. So I'm gonna push this way off into the blue, and now we'll see, oh no, those shots are not matching. I'll push this other shot into the blue, and you can easily see if they're relatively close. Once you've applied those color corrections, if you back out, you're gonna see that those changes have been applied on the primary storyline, and that is one reason why I really, really love using multicam edits. Now, another way that I really love using multicam edits is for stuff like doing picture in picture in Final Cut Pro. So here I am in one of my tutorials, and let's say I wanted to add in a picture in picture effect onto the screen. Down here at the bottom, I have my screen recording. At the top, I have my video recording. I'm gonna change the monitor angle over to the screen, and what we can do within multicams is actually use compound clips and compound clips are ridiculously awesome. So I'm gonna right click and select new compound clip and we'll just call it whatever we wanna call it. Now what we can do is I'm gonna copy this video clip from me and I'm actually gonna shorten it to be the exact same length. We'll jump inside of this compound clip, go back to the beginning and push command V to paste it. So now they should be in sync since they were the same length. Now what we can do is jump in here. I'm gonna apply my picture in picture effect. I'll have a link to this down below. And if we select our picture in picture effect, I can shrink this up, put it over on the side, something like that. I might fix the pan just a little bit. So now I have this picture in picture effect. And so now my screen is going to have this picture in picture effect applied and it's gonna save me a lot of time trying to resync up video every single time. If this video was helpful to you, you might wanna check out this video where I show you my entire workflow for editing one of these very tutorials. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.